that sounds means we're back on the clock. None better on the clock than the old, probably the biggest waster of clock time, Big Co. <laughs> Loves to eat the clock. Anybody who's been in a draft of Big Co is like, Jesus, just make a pick, please. He's, he's there's, there's going down every somebody's, avenue. Somebody's just laying on the Z's on, <laughs> on the oh, chemo. <laughs> that is That makes me laugh. So if, if first time it happened, it and really you don't give a shit. Pissed me off. But so you, you got to do. You shouldn't. Couple second, it's your time. Second and third time the dude laid on the Z's, I just laughed. It was pretty funny. It's a good joke. What's funny is now that I'm a couple years into the the FFPC leagues, they give you monster clocks to deal and wheel and deal and make as you there trace. Should be. As, as you should Unless have. you can get everyone in one room. Right, right, right. Which right. is, unless it's a home league, it's very unlikely. The one room draft scenario is the, is the most fun. But opposite of that is lots of time to wheel and deal and send trade offers in. I've gotten this one league in FFPC. These guys are so worn out with me hanging out on the clock. Their boys don't even respond to my trade offers anymore. It's, <laughs> it's sad, but true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at 1-7. We'll, we'll give you a fresh crack to restart. That was your crack. At 1-7 <laughs> with the seventh pick in the first round, who I'm, you got? I'm going Ronald Jones. Rojo. Rojo. Coolest uh, nickname. Go. Coolest nickname in the draft. I've we've seen uh, we've seen Ronald Jones go into into one three area. We've seen Ronald Jones come in this. It, it is absolutely physically physically possible to get Ronald Jones at one seven one eight in your rookie draft. Somebody might tons love of him. fluctuation like you were tons saying. of fluctuation in those back. Th- actually, you know two three four five six seven eight gets crazy. So with this one seven, I probably. Uh, this is Kevin's team. Again, we said it last episode when we did the first one through six. It was, you know, it's pretty much not roster. That's you know, his team name, Kevin. Dependent. <laughs> Maybe you want um, to pick that up a little has bit. Has nothing to do with the rosters. We're going to go best fa- best player available here. And to me, that's Ronald Jones. He did, Kevin's team does need running backs, but he needs a little bit of everything. So um, he does. Coming into the draft, obviously, Ronald Jones is drawing some comparisons with his breakaway speed to Jamal Charles and stuff like that. And it's just the, it's, it's the hair. Well, <laughs> and the number, and the number, I, twenty-five, I've, and the hair, I, and the small stature. What's what's first of all? It's funny to me about Ronald Jones is to me. I was I watch a, a what I do watch of rookie tape and stuff is on my computer. And we came over to Casey's house a couple weeks ago, and he sh- had some uh, a highlight tape of Ronald Jones up on his like sixty inch screen on his TV, and I was like, Jesus, he looks a lot bigger, faster, stronger, and fa- <laughs> he looks bigger on the he, big TV. He, he looks awesome on the big <laughs> screen. Um, so I, I mean, he, dude flashes for sure. He's obviously, he's a sprinter, you know, he's, you know, world-class athlete kind he's of player, sprinter. but I was just thinking that I don't think you can call, I don't mean, I don't think you can go bringing in Jamal Charles into this argument. I mean, Jamal Charles is anybody who weighs 205 pounds automatically gets paid compared to Jamal Charles. Right. It's, it's annoying. Well, then you have. Dreadlocks and and you wear twenty five. Yeah, I get it, I get it, but all everything's lining take, up. To take nothing away from Ronald Jones, he could be three quarters of the player that Jamal Charles was and be a, a pro bowler. You know, like Jamal Charles is freaking one of the best running backs ever. So I don't want to put him on that level. He's so freaking good. He is freaking good. <laughs> so all right, so one of the biggest RB situations pre draft was the Tampa Bay Bucks backfield. Okay, yeah. we all know they got a good, you know, a, a solid young. Proven yet unproven quarterback gunslinger and gunslinger is the best gunslinger Jameis. He's if 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 nothing else, the defense has to back up a little bit because he'll throw it all over the field. They got awesome Mike Evans. They got some solid tight ends. They got Godwin, this beast, and they got field stretching Deshaun Parts Jackson. Parts and pieces are all there. They got everything you want except for a good need running an back. RB. Need a running back. So it couldn't have gotten better running back situation. I don't think I don't think there was really a better insert starting running back here than. Than the Bucks coming into the draft. Well, hold on. Let me let me so let me stop you there because I looked into the Bucks a little bit. These guys were 26th in rushing attempts last year and 27th in rushing yards. So it's not like it's the greatest situation. Well, if they were had a good into. running back, they wouldn't have drafted a running back, Jason. Uh, I mean, the the line situation is is <laughs> they've had a ton of injuries on that line. And that that could be part of the the, the issue there. And then the other That's part true. of the issue was that maybe there wasn't 
you know, the, the line best was... running back situation in the league. I did like what Peyton Barber did at the end of the season. You started to see sure, a little bit of life in the running game there. Well, they thought they had Doug Martin, and that didn't work out. Right. And then they thought they had Jaquiz Rogers, and that didn't work out. And then Peyton Barber might have looked okay for a couple games at the end of the season. But truth be told, they don't have a running back. That's why it's a good and they situation. Had a, they had a banged-up line that they had to move pieces all over the place. But So it was, I, it was the 17th-ranked. Line. I think overall, it could be better, but it was definitely bad. In, than as <laughs> advertised, what you just said: twenty sixth and twenty seventh in attempts and yards and ball. I, w- I would agree with that. And, and but they're ranking seventeenth. That's not the worst. But it was the run blocking that was really where they were lacking. They were the the, the running backs averaged the, the seventh fewest yards before contact with one point two. So that's it's a small number there. Okay, so maybe when I say one of the I, I say best plug and play running back situations, maybe they don't have like the offensive line of the titans that we talked about like that casey and i just talked about for you know deon lewis to come in there and derrick henry but they have the threats that stretch the defense out they have mike evans they, they have had the godwin they pieces. have deshaun jock jackson they have good tight ends they have a quarterback sure. that'll throw it all over the and, field and and there's no competition virtually that's true is, he should right. be given as all the opportunity of, in part the of world. exactly i i, I would agree opportunity with that. should be there Obviously, talent should be there with Ronald Jones. And they did make some attempts with the offensive line. They brought in Ryan Jensen from the Baltimore Ravens. He was the ninth best center right, per top, PFF top last year. Per PFF. They, they tried to address it in the draft. They drafted Alex uh, Kappa out of Humboldt State, I believe, is right. where he came from. A great Northwestern Athletic Conference Player of the mm-hmm. Year. Mm-hmm. Um, first team all-conference all four years. Played uh, one year of offensive line in high school. So this is a nice – obviously, Humboldt State is – you know, known not, for other things, right? Sure, the Golden <laughs> Triangle, um, or the Green Triangle, however you want to look at it. But a Division Two All American, a, a, a pretty solid player who hasn't been playing that long, and it could be proved to be six six three oh five. Could be a really solid player for him in the third round. That which they desperately need at least one more player right. along this offensive line. And they've been working him out at guard and tackle, so they're seeing where he feels there. Getting that center from getting Jensen that'll that'll allow him to push uh, Ali Marpet back to guard which is a more natural position for and him. they got that awesome right tackle demar uh, this, dotson the the right doc dotson. demar dotson is a is a stud it just consistently the bright spot of this line seventh best tackle uh graded out in the run in uh overall the run blocking area was not great just like the rest of this line he uh, tours pcl in november so that was yeah. a bummer after having this really awesome year, but he, he should be back healthy for training camp, so that's good. So I it's, don't, it's looking up. Right. I don't think Marpet's a terrible player. He was playing kind of out of position, which he's been asked to do because this line's been banged up for a few years in a row now. You get him back in position. Like you said, they got Jensen. Um, Donovan Smith, the former second-round pick, is not been great, and he, he's a real weak spot for him uh, on this line. And then you have J.R. Sweezy, who's right could be the right guard. Um He's had his ups and downs. Not a great year last year, but he's proved to be a, a serviceable player. That's not like, oh my god, this guy's so bad. He's just a complete liability. Yeah, Sweezy's been around a, a block a, while, a couple times. He's, he's right also here. been asked to play around a little bit the last few seasons, I believe. So I'm, they're making attempts, and they do have good pieces around them, and they got this gunslinger. So I, I mean, I I really like Rojo. I mean, I'm a huge fan of this kid. I've, I, I liked him pre-draft, and I just but. But for people to come out after the draft and be like, oh, my God, this was the best spot ever. I'm like, I, I mean, I don't know if it was the best spot ever, but, I mean, it's it's certainly good enough, I guess. I think it's m- mostly based op- on opportunity, opportunity. And, and what the general consensus of people around the league is, is there's nobody else there for or people well, around, not the league, but g- people, gen- the general po- population of people saying, well, there's there's nobody else there. So it's great for right. op- opportunities, well, King. The, and and, and the, when you look at the highlights of this guy, it's – He's a flashy player. Exactly. Well, the combination of just what you just said, the, the combination of the fact that the backfield's relatively empty. There, you know, Doug Martin's out of there, and you got just unproven guys, and Charles Sims is regular. Charles Sims is He's back. Third Brought him back. back on the low. Okay. So the combination of the opportunity of the running back room that is there that for Ronald Jones to step right into and be lead dog, and the fact that the pass catchers that they have can limit the focus, the defense's focus on the running back. Those two things together creates that – situation that I think Ronald Jones steps into and and just it's can be you know it's 
fairly salivating for a running right. back's opportunity coming in. You're like, you got, you got the, you got the weapons for the defense not to be able to focus on either or now. And then because last year, let's face it, they didn't have, they weren't scaring anybody Nobody on the ground, was, right. which is it could, kind of goes towards those 26th and 27th rankings that you go to there. So, and so now, and. DJ Moore's on the board. Royce Freeman's on the board when I'm looking in this right range right here at 1 7. And Ronald Jones, obviously, Royce Freeman did it all at Oregon. He did it all. His, his numbers were obvious and they were there for years. So he's, he's a player. Ronald, Royce Freeman is a legitimate running back. But Ronald Jones' is top end speed, breakaway plays, when you watch that highlight tape, it's the upside of what's the, going on with Ronald the, Jones. The, if, like I said, like and there's, there's no. Devonte Booker in his way. This is all true too, but like Ronald Better Jones, that high end upside. If it hits, Ronald. If it hits, Ronald Jones could be a better player if, for your fantasy team than Royce Freeman. That's why I took him here, and I wasn't looking at wide receiver because you guys know me and, and Ro- you know how I roll. Royce Freeman again is not. He's. I think. I feel like he's very safe. He's. He's was a pretty consistent player outside of that 16 year uh, at Oregon, but you don't have the home run upside that. Right, make your day in one play, kind of that Rojo is going to offer you, and there's not much competition here in Tampa and, and, Bay. And well, obviously, we'll get to Royce Freeman here shortly, and we'll, I got yeah. some great things to say about Royce Freeman. I'm not here to beat him up. I'm just telling you about who I was looking at yeah. and why I took Ronald Jones at one sure. seven. And I don't. Th- I mean, some pe- I have seen Royce Freeman get taken in front of a couple of these guys that's already off the board. So some people love Royce Freeman because of his body of work and his ability, his versatility. Versatility. When you can, when you can catch and you can run and you can block and you can protect the quarterback, you're going to be on the field. And there's a chance that the Broncos have him in there as a as a three down back all the time. He's like a Chevy Tahoe. There's <laughs> nothing sexy about him, but everybody <laughs> wants that car. They don't. They like driving it around. They don't but necessarily it's, it's, know how to drive. It's it not all an the import. Time, it's not. Doesn't go real it's fast. Hard to park, but <laughs> you can fit a bunch of stuff in it. It looks good. It, the, the style stays all right for a while. <laughs> yeah, they had long runs with the body Royce style. Freeman is a Chevy Tahoe. I can feel the the YouTube name coming on here. But back back to Rojo. I, I didn't want to knock this pick at all. I love the pick. I'm I'm all for it here. At the Rojo guys are going to scream at you and say, "How can you let him go to one seven? But that's and I the, get that. The, the Rashad Penny guys are going to scream. How does he? You know, anybody who there's there's a Somebody loves each and every one of these running backs, yeah. as we've said many times before. So if you're a Rojo guy and you get your hands on him at 1-7, you, if you're a strong enough Rojo guy, you've been trying to trade trade up for the last two or three picks to take him. So that's just one of those things. You sit back at 1-7, and, and you're happy because you're going to get a good player no matter what. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I love about Rojo is obviously you love the game-breaking skill, and I don't think he gets enough credit for that game-breaking ability due to the, quote, bad combine that he had. I mean – this cat ran a four six while pulling his hamstring, but they wanted that like that's something special to me. Yeah. To be able to pull your hamstring, still run a four six. But if he'd have put up some ridiculous forty and, and crushed the rest of the combine, right. you, like the whole narrative would be it would different. be different. I feel like you it can would be maybe like get it's him high, here. It's one. high for some people, but I feel like it would be high for right. more well, people. And uh, like I don't tell people to go look at highlight tape because we, we everybody in that listens They've to already us, seen it. Every, well, obviously, but everybody <laughs> that listens to us knows that we try to stress that actually watching the games and not just the highlights. But if you will go pull up Ronald Jones highlight tape, in his highlights, it's more than just hit a hit a wide open hole or catch a screen pass out in space and run like he's breaking tackles oh man and making he well, I his didn't highlight finish, right? tape so is like, full of really good plays not just like a home run right, that right, were, right. he so didn't it's not, just blow the doors off of people because they couldn't catch him he broke tackles got tripped up this was not a good up. usc offensive line last right year. he he's he, he he showed good balance and the ability to to get off of a shoe, shoestring tackle when somebody else may have fallen down and then take it and so, I mean, he's he showed some Rashad Penny and some things that yeah, you he's, know he's well, not he's not just a pri- a speed back that relies just on speed, in my opinion. Right. No, and and he's I'll finish my tough. thought of, of when I was like, I not only like him obviously because of the breakaway ability, but it's it's the toughness. He plays bigger than a two hundred and five pound back. Like he plays tougher than that. He he Agreed. he knows when to cut his losses and and to get a couple to grind out a extra couple more. yards. This dude forced 58 tackles, missed tackles last year. That's second most in the NCAA. Like, that's a strong number there. That's a strong it's, number. It's not only hard to tackle him, it's hard to, like, get a hold of him at all. Like, Wrangle he's just so sliv- slippery. Um, and and I, I like, the game speed is super, super fast, but he doesn't always just try to get out to the right. outside. He's down to grind it out. And so, like, I really like... I really like the game of, of this kid. I, I do, too. And, I, and I, I love the fact, like, he, he'll, he'll grind... And I, I just 
my biggest takeaway was is that you ju- he just needs a sliver. Yeah. He just needs a little bit of a sliver. A little right. crease or a crevasse. Uh, right, and it's gone. And I think Crevice. they're obviously the hands and the catching was, is questionable because you just didn't see a lot of it. Right. But I, I saw you watch well, some interviews with him. He's like, oh, I didn't drop a ball. I right. didn't drop any ones that they threw to me. Right. So Which I don't a, know if that's accurate. He's but. a great interview. Yeah. Um, they asked him, like, how does it feel about finally arriving in the NFL? And he's like, well, I haven't arrived yet. I haven't done anything. Right. I love that answer. And then they were like, yeah. well, they started asking him about his lack of production in the passing game. And he's like, I mean, I caught every ball they threw at me, mm-hmm. right? Which I couldn't, like which, you, I couldn't find a stat to back that up. But I mean, I didn't see him drop anything. This is really is the case. what's going to make him be very sought after or not sought after, in my opinion, is whether or not the hands and the catching and and the receiving ability is all encompassed in in what he can do because that's really what you're looking for. I mean, you look pretty for handsy that all around back, and even if let, let's say he fails as a as a workhorse back, you're hoping that. You'll see some hands catching and some and right. some good catching out of this and guy. And it's like you, you said, it's use one him as play, that kind of guy. One play can right. make your whole day. I think I got to take this guy. Still, I got to take him over over Rashad Penny. I'll take him at one six. Yeah. So so time has time has uh, passed passed, and we're in a, in a couple weeks. in a couple weeks. Anybody since moved Rojo kind of up or down since we maybe made these picks or since the NFL draft happened? Like you you like him over. Uh, over Penny, Big Co. I mean, I would probably I would take Penny over Jones just because of what I think is going. Obviously, the ultimately, just the volume that the Seahawks are going to give him, the the un, undeniable volume, and the fact that they say they're adamantly saying three down back for him, they're going to run it with him. Seahawks lie him. all the time. They, well, um, but also, and then the and then the and then the Russell Wilson threat. Like you know, if he if the threat of him running yeah. it, that 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 uh, dual threat Winston quarterback, the ability Brinson no, Brinson is not. It's even just a close different. To it's Russell a different. Wilson. It's two t- totally different quarterbacks here. There's one guy who is uh, very active with his legs and uses his mind in the right way and not i know Jameis ha- has oh, an extremely high football iq but it's not always there between the ears and oh, Russell James wilson is scramble. always dialed in to knowing exactly what he needs to do for his team yeah, what's Jay- best for his team he's never he's not going to do anything stupid like what Jameis winston does before games or during games yeah. when he's pushing people in the back and doing also russell wilson's never going to put his team in that russell position eating his fingers like they yeah. were rich J- Jameis winston can scramble like he, you've seen, yeah. we've all seen the highlights of him. You know that play where he's backed up against the goal line and ran around. And th- I mean, dude can scramble when when there's somebody in his face. But like Russell Wilson is a magician, and so that his, his ability, he's he can run it. Like Jason, uh, you know, um, um, Jameis Winston can scramble, but Russell Wilson can run the football. So uh, that that threat alone ties up enough defensive attention that Penny. I think would be we'll see a lot more open or open windows to be able to hit. Now I, I don't obviously I don't believe that the Seahawks have the offensive weaponry out there on the outsides that the Bucks do. So it's well that just it, speaks to more of what Russell Wilson does for that squad. Absolutely, and it speaks to more of what kind of volume that Penny could get as sure. versus versus uh, Rojo here. So I would take Penny over Rojo, but I I like Rojo for this pick at one seven. I'm not upset if I'm at one seven and I see Rojo. Well, to wrap this thing up, you know, I did, I did a little digging into uh, the offense of the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they were twenty fourth in red zone percentage, which is never good. Like that's piss poor. There's only a handful more teams that were worse. <laughs> um, they 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 crushed it in the air with fourth in total yardage uh, in total, but they just kept sputtering in the red zone. Just to put it in perspective here, Jimmy G had more completions inside the twenty than Jameis Winston had. Like he only, he only played, played five games, five or six games. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, Jameis is better in, in in total yards in that in that closed down area, but completion percentage um, is is Jimmy G's way. And then the same thing, kind of inside the ten, Jimmy G's got more completions than Jameis Winston inside that area. In which, five games, right? Which makes absolutely zero sense. Twenty um, seventh in total rushing uh, yards just not great yeah. Just this this offense was good it didn't have any problem moving around but for whatever reason when they got into this red zone area it just wasn't happening for them which is the reason probably why when we talked about the titans 
last week we were saying how the new offensive coordinator is coming in here and saying yardage really doesn't matter. What matters at the end of the day is getting an explosive play that ends in the, into the end zone. The points are what matter. True. Anybody can True. get yardage. So that's what we're looking for the Bucks to do right here to take a step forward um, and, and be an offense that is converting these yards into points here. True. And hopefully Rojo can give them that extra boost to get over that hump well hopefully what you're looking for if you're the tampa bay buccaneers is you're looking for rojo to take some pressure off of Jameis. i right. mean because at the end of the day let's face it it all is going to run through the quarterback anyway so you can have all the weapons in the world but if you can't utilize them to help out us fantasy gamers because that's what really matters right you know so if if Jameis doesn't get back to pepper and mike evans mike evans owner is going to be upset if Jameis owners don't throw it to the tight ends, the tight end owners are going yeah. to be upset. If Rojo's not working out, it all kind of might you know, sputter like it did last year because without a decent threat of the running game, you have to be a superb quarterback to make things happen through the air if you have no threat of the right. run. And I'm not saying that Jameis can't become a superb quarterback, but he's not yet, and he's very, very young, and he, has, he did things as a rookie quarterback that no other rookie had done outside of Peyton Manning. Jameis splashed onto the scene and he did some great things. And you and while he was doing those great things, you had to say, okay, well, throw away all those interceptions because we're just glad he takes chances. Right. How many times do you say, you know, well, I just want the young quarterback to take a chance and keep his head up when he throws a pick. Jameis regressed a little bit last year. It is time to come back. He's got a, he's got some new toys. He's got some returning toys that are awesome. OJ Howard's coming into his second year, and he looks like freaking Calvin Johnson out there from the tight end spot. Yeah, you you got some things. They signed they they, they signed your boy Cameron Brake, Jameis Winston. They did that for you. You love Cameron Brake. They kept him in town for you. Is that Jameis's boy? Or your boy? That's Jameis's boy. I think he's that's my Dirk boy. Cutter's boy because he likes to. He's my boy because Jameis the two tight loves ends over there. Him. You got to you got to take a step forward here if you're Jameis Winston and if you're the Tampa Bay Bucks, you're looking for your quarterback well, to move forward. It's just like I said. I mean, he he regressed some, but they still were they still did well moving the ball. It just got into these red zones and sputtered out. I think that comes down to being like I just. Like I said, I know Jameis has it between the years from a football IQ perspective of like when you talk about diagnosing. Sure. Well, called, there's execution. But, but it gets right. harder. It's, and then, it's yeah. then getting into those situations and being able to just put it all down, take all the pressure off and and convert this play. And right. Jameis just hasn't shown that ability to me yet. And that's what it's going to take for Jameis and the Bucks. Really, they're, he, the Bucks are going to go as Jameis goes. Yeah, no and doubt. That's what it's going to take. That's what I was trying to say. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick break here. Grab another beer. We'll be back with pick one eight for your pleasure. Well, come back. Mm. See what I did there? Double dipped. Double dipped. Ooh. Yeah, little, like, little pop to bring us back. That was a quick pop. Quick pop. All right. Well, welcome back in. We're ready to hit up pick one eight in this mock it up before you fuck it up. But before we do, we wanted to hit you off with a little Twitter plug. You can find us as a collective unit at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. You can find Big Co. at Dynasty Big Co. You can find myself at IMC Myers. And without further ado, there's that lovely sound that we don't hear often enough, I don't think. Jay Wayne was right on that one. Let's get it. On Pick 1-8. Picking for old Uncle Big Co. squad over here. <laughs> Who you your, got? Is that your team name, Big Co? Sure. Just giving it away. <laughs> we got some bad team names in this league. Yeah, this we is need not a creative team, team, uh, team league namer. All right, so this is my pick, 1-8. Um, going DJ Moore. Big Co's <laughs> skin just crawled. <laughs> yes, bad pick, Jay Wayne. <laughs> bad pick. First of all, let me just... Say that <laughs> I'm one eight because I got bounced. It's commandeering the mic here. I'm taking it from. I got bounced first week of the playoffs by a team that shouldn't even been in the playoffs. Mm. My, I got Alvin Kamara. Oh, that's I, the worst. Alvin Kamara got got a concussion. He goes out in the first quarter. Whatever else happened, it doesn't matter from there because I was seeing red. First quarter, Alvin Kamara was out. Julio probably had a bad week for me. T. Y. Hilton was on the bench because the quarterbacks got no left, got no shoulder. A.J. Green might have been doing something. I don't know. Who knows what Brandon Cooks was doing that week. Damn it, boy. <laughs> Kareem Hunt didn't do anything probably for me. Just whole team just shut down on me, and I was trying to go for the back-to-back -back championship and just got bounced. See ya. I mean, the team that I was playing against was laughable. I was like a 68-point favorite. He bro. shouldn't have been in the, in the playoffs. I, I was like a 68-point favorite and got bounced out of the playoffs. So for those of you tuning in just on YouTube, this is a, this is a home league that the three of us are all in together. 
And Big Coast talking about his own team, obviously, here. I'm glad he got back. Well, last year when we did this, I had the 112, and it was from... pretty nice to talk about my team. But now mm-hmm. I'm at the 1-8. I don't like to be that high up. I like to be way back in the back. All right, Jay Wayne. So why DJ Moore at the 8 instead of, let's say, a Royce Freeman? You're definitely probably going Royce Freeman, huh? Well, obviously, over, but over I know you, you've been trying to take DJ Moore for like seven picks now. So go ahead and tell me why you, why you like DJ Moore. <sighs> Man, I don't know that I can't tell you why I Dude like DJ loves Moore. DJ Moore. I really wanted to take him at five. I, I alluded to that in in our the first half of this mock it up. But that was my team. You don't you don't put that voodoo on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> 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 I knew there was no way that Casey was going to take a running back at one five. A wide uh, receiver. Sorry, wide receiver. Of course, was I thinking? And so I ultimately went with carry on because I, I had to, and 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 I want to put Rojo at five in my overall. Rookie rankings, but I mean, I think when I'm on the clock, I think I'll take those two running backs. But then when it gets to one eight, I think I think I gotta go DJ Moore. I just, I, just, I I understand if you want to go uh, Royce Freeman here. I can't I can't knock you at all. I can't knock you if you want to take eight straight running backs in this rookie draft. That's totally understandable, and I get it. If you if if you need a running back at all, that's probably the way you should go. But I just I'm so enamored. I'm enamored. Yep. Enamored. With DJ Moore, the ceiling is just so attractive that I'm having a hard time with this with, with not taking him. Um, he he's raw, and the route running isn't as precise as maybe Calvin Ridley. But if if you had a high ceiling and non rawness, you'd be the first pick, right? <laughs> if you had a high ceiling and non rawness, you're you're Saquon Barkley, and you're the undeniable first pick overall. And 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 you can knock him, but for the drops. But he, I mean, he was the first. Run wide receiver off the board in the NFL draft. Want to add that in there, um, but you can knock him for the drops if you want. But I mean, he's the definition of a quick twitcher. He, the start and stop ability is phenomenal. It just looks so smooth and fluid when he's out there running around. He's built thick up at, at six foot two ten. He's basically built like all he's, these running backs that we're talking about, right? And they'll hand him off the ball a little bit. They did at Maryland, and and he had fifteen bench re- press reps, which is more than some of these running backs had. And he's just he's slippery and powerful after the catch. He, slippery. He's, he's quick enough to beat press coverage. It's it's hard to even get a hand on him, much less he can fight you off. He's got that strong upper body and he can hand fight you. It was evident to see him beating press coverage in college, which is which is awesome to see. Not the greatest of hands, but I mean they're pretty solid. You see him plucking high balls out you, of the air like, on a like consistent the circus basis. Catch hands from him is right. always good. Right, and the, and the QB play wasn't great, so. Terrible, at, at, at actually. Maryland. I mean, it was, yeah, it was terrible. Terrible. Um, terrible. Terrible. Terrible, actually. This dude definitely ups his play when he gets near the red zone. He knows when it's about to count, and, and, and you see him beat dudes on a back shoulder fade like a big man, you yeah. know, at only six feet tall. And he can, he's got the metrics that you want. He can, that, that most people want. I don't necessarily want them, but they're nice to have. I don't need them. I like them. But I mean, he can go up and hang in the air for like ever. Right. He just hangs in the air. It's just it's well, just, when you put his metrics with what his play on the field does, it's just it's right. a it, fantastic it's, combination of things yeah, that everybody the, would it want. It was fuel to the fire. DJ Moore was already looking good, and he was doing some things on tape that everybody was that just loving. And then he goes and runs these numbers, and right, it was just blew the top off the exactly. off the he got, everybody got a little crazy. Everybody's top was blown off. The NFL included. They took him number one overall. I, I love the fact as that as a he receiver, can, right. I love the fact that he can make your play, make your day. I fucked that up every time. He can make your day in one play. He's a he's a yeah. home run hitter. And this is an ultimate home run cut. And and then even if he just totally tanks it his rookie year, I mean maybe not totally tanks it, but if say he has a mediocre to not great rookie year, he still has name cachet that's gonna resonate through your first year. You know, it's gonna hold that value. It's crazy how Certain players, like people in the dynasty fantasy football community, will make excuses for players they love, even if they don't perform. It's no crazy. Doubt. And then, then players they hate that do perform well, they still are like, ah, well, it's gonna fall off soon. Like nobody yeah, that wanted guy's to, terrible, right? Nobody wanted to give Kareem Hunt or Deshaun Watson their due. It took them five, ten, six, seven, eight games before somebody Kareem finally Hunt, was like, Kareem Hunt's still on the outs. People are right, still like, uh, right. I don't know. So like, it's it's just crazy how some people can have the name Cachet, play bad, and uh, still Jordan, hold Jordan value. Jordan Howard is, is, you know, uh, all that dude has done 
is produced, but right. I, I don't want him. Right. I don't and want I, him. I hate to knock my boy Sammy Watkins, but like he really hasn't done a whole lot. I mean, eight touchdowns is eight touchdowns, but he hasn't done a whole lot of it. He's still like a top. Is, the the thing is, is when you see pick. the good, it's it's really good with Sammy Watkins, and that's what everyone's chasing yeah, around. So they excuse all the other. Well, I mean, kind of Sammy's, numbers. Sammy's defense. I mean, I don't defend too many wide receivers, but for a couple of weeks there, a couple of years ago, he sure, was that's ridiculous. what I'm saying. When it's right, good, yeah. it's good. It's great. He had yeah. a four week swing of ridiculous. He's points. had injuries and he's been in some bad situations, but he's still up there at the top, even though he hasn't performed like some of the dudes that are around him. He still has. He still holds. He's that definitely value. levitated up into that top end of draft picks. Well, he was, a lot he, longer than. We Most. gave we gave Sammy twenty five minutes on a podcast one time saying how in the world does he He's stay way value is bulletproof bulletproof, yes. value. bulletproof yep. value that's what it was yes. it on Sammy got his so all right d- so we obviously know that you like DJ, DJ Moore. Moore is going to have a little bit of bulletproof value for the next year or two I see what you're saying Jay Wayne I believe I, I believe you and I. I I agree with that. I agree that his bulletproof right. value is going to be there for a while. So it's clear that you why not DJ Moore here, Big Um. Well, for me, it's because I. I did win the championship. If you this, have hate in your heart, man, that. <laughs> I, I don't have any hate. I don't have any hate for DJ Moore. I like DJ Moore. It's debatable. I, it, in it's fact, a bad pick. <laughs> well, yeah, just because it wasn't a running back. I mean, I, that's fair. I won the championship with this team two years ago with no running backs. I mean, I I got and now lucky. you got Kamara and I got Kareem. Kareem I got lucky in the rookie draft last year and hit two two home runs back to back home runs and now I got some running backs but I need more running backs because they go quick and if something like I, I mean if something happens to one of them I, you got to start two in this league and uh, I need more and I'll, <laughs> I need more I need more and I, I would be taking Royce Freeman here just on I'd take the Tahoe and pack up my luggage <laughs> and take and hope we're going on a long trip you can fifth row it or you can fit more luggage <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> Put the luggage rack on top and throw a trailer hitch ball on that bitch and just you roll dra- on out. You could drag your tiny house <laughs> right down the road with you. It's got to be no problem. It's got to be four wheel drive. No, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll just stop at every gas station we come you to. Don't when we finally get stuck get in the mud or the, the only snow. thing, only thing about a Tahoe is the gas station stops. When we finally get to Royce yeah, Freeman, EcoBoost in there now. You get a little bit true. better mileage. Definitely got to go EcoBoost. <laughs> I don't know, is that Ford? I don't know. They all got EcoBoost now. They Ford just call EcoBoost. it different things. Yeah, it's, they all steal each other's technology. When we get to Royce Freeman, I'm going to want to name that YouTube video Tahoe, but we're already, <laughs> we're already covered it in two different players. So, anyways, you took DJ Moore from my team, and honestly, I, ah, I take that. I wouldn't. He's hate drafted it. a rookie wide receiver. I wouldn't hate it when we get on the draft. When we get on the board here, when this draft comes around for this league, I've, I'm hoping that DJ Moore is already gone, so that pushes one more running back option to me. Um, but in this format right here, the way we're doing this, DJ Moore or Royce Freeman were basically your only two options. I would have taken Royce Freeman, obviously, but I mean, DJ Moore, like you said, you take a home run cut here. If he comes out and he starts playing, you know, puts up, has a good freshman season, you know, anything. If he has a couple games looking like Juju Smith Schuster, you, you can't get him for the one eight again, ever again. Um, but that being said, if Royce Freeman comes out there Tahoeing it up and he's getting some, you know, comes some running and some catching every week, then a, a, a running back who's scoring points is priceless. So I, I feel like, but but I will say this: Royce Freeman does not have anywhere near the bulletproof value that DJ Moore is. Right. Ro- DJ Moore is the much safer pick for value. Leaving your rookie draft week one, both players do nothing. DJ Moore, okay. Royce Advantage, Freeman, DJ Moore. <laughs> yeah. if, if both if both players have a bad first two weeks of the season, Royce Freeman question marks all over the place. Right. DJ Moore, it's Cam Newton's fault. Like, there's no doubt about right. it. I'm probably taking Royce Freeman, but if you're really questionable on how what you got going on, or you, it's really a long term play for you. If you're completely rebuilding, then DJ Moore is a much better. So, pick. what would be your negative marks for? DJ Moore. So is he is DJ Moore your first receiver off the board? Yeah, for sure. My neg- my my negative mark is the fact that he's playing with Cam Newton, and I haven't seen Cam Fair Newton. Enough. I haven't seen Cam Newton really support a solid receiver for more than three or four weeks at a time. Not named Greg Olson, let alone Olson Funches. Yeah, we it, DJ Moore. Check back to the Christian McCaffrey episode Christian McCaffrey. last week for plenty of Panthers talk. CJ Anderson. There, the fact that the the fact that Greg Olson comes back is a big big downside for all the other pass catchers. Just like I said last week um and with the running backs that now they got two running backs that can catch passes obviously christian mccaffrey is elite at catching passes out of the backfield but i just feel like there's i don't think there's quite as much upside for dj Moore wearing a panthers jersey as pretty much 
a lot – two-thirds of the other teams he could have gone to. Yeah, you know, the Panthers were 27th in passing attempts, 29th in completions, 29th in completion percentage, Those 28th in yards. Ridiculous, tied for ridiculous 18th numbers. 18th in touchdowns. Ridiculous so a, numbers supporting up, what I just said. Right. Yeah, those aren't great numbers, but I'll still take DJ Moore, whatever. Right, so, well – Part of the issue, I didn't love DJ Moore's vertical game coming out of college, and Norv Turner's got a little bit of that kind of take shots, which I think is improvable because there's great metrics to go along with what DJ Moore does. So I think the vertical game is improvable by him, but I just didn't love it coming out of college. I think he's a pretty smart guy. He knows how to beat zones and and, and work the coverages, and then you, you add the metrics in there in those tighter, smaller mid to intermediate to short routes and I, I like a lot of what DJ Moore does. The reason that I would be interested in taking him is the ability to turn a screen into oh, yeah. no an eighty yard touchdown. It, and it's gonna it's really to me, DJ Moore's ceiling is just gonna come down to the creativity of what the Carolina Panthers can do on offense. Love that point. And DJ Moore's gonna come right in and challenge, you know, the old Golden Tate comparison for Yak, no doubt about it. But can I to, D, oh, to DJ Moore's credit? Just how or, many of those short balls are gonna be available for him? That's a good point too. Um, but let me just give it let me throw let me throw DJ Moore a, col- a bone in college. Like you said, his his long throw his long plays weren't really there or looked good. Like with the lack Bad of quarterbacks, with the with the lack of quarterback play at all, could you even get that far away from the line of scrimmage and hope to catch a ball? You know, no, that's a good point. But back to like, it was more about like his vert- the way he was getting separated on vertical routes that I didn't love. Yeah, I'm just so you know what I mean. I'm saying like delivery. I mean his route if you running got a bad is rounded in a, if you, in a right. if you bad got a bad, way. If you got a bad quarterback, the closer you stay into him, the better chance you got to catch it. Right. So if the farther away that that you you know obviously a long pass is a long pass and and, and guys are bigger, completion faster, rates, stronger. Completion next, rates drop down the field for a reason. The next go round, and I didn't love the way he separated in a vertical route in college. So fair enough. I just wanted to ask, and he didn't like crush contested catches. There were some really nice. Nice wild like, plays out there. Cir- sure. Kind of, cir- there'll be some circus catches that are yeah. like holy right. shnikes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shnikes. It, another another negative point that I was thinking about is is you know he definitely got frustrated in college with bad quarterback play and erratic throws. And Cam Newton is one to be an erratic thrower and get frustrated himself. Oh, good and point. And I could see these boys getting mad at each other and it just the wheels falling off in certain games. But like when when it's on, it's going to be amazing. And when it's not, it's going to be very frustrating and maybe even hard to watch. Well, that- and I'm not like I don't have the most highest expectations for DJ Moore in his rookie year. I mean, any rookie wide receiver, like we get, we're getting spoiled here with these rookie wide receivers. We, we that got are able spoiled to, in a in a small batch a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, but it really hasn't panned out, right? Since. So uh, that's uh, too too much. This is a longer play, and 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 like you said, you know, if you're looking down the line a little bit and you're you're wanting that longer play because you were like, this is, I could see, you, I could, I can understand this pick, and so I'm just cautioning, you know, don't get if you take him and it doesn't turn out awesome, like. Don't get discouraged right off the rip. These boys got to work this out, and this this offense is could be really scary and fun to watch if they figure it out. If they don't, it could just but just, that is definitely fall a poss- off the what, wheels. Some of the off. things you just said they were really good, and it, it's definitely a possibility that there's some games, and it could be earlier than than later in the season. But they could be spaced out. But there's definitely chances uh, that that love things, that yeah things aren't going to look too good for the Panthers' offense passing game. Anyways, here's one other thing that I I want to just bring to light. So we're in the Ultimate Dynasty Podcast League with a a bunch of different Dynasty podcasters in there, one of which is the Podfather, who is far and away the leader in the clubhouse for fanboys of DJ Moore, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, the metrics. Loves this guy. Loves College dog. Would diddle diddle him if he (laughs) had the chance, I think. Loves him. He drafted Royce Freeman over DJ Moore in said league. Now, in his defense... Just because you love a dude and you've ranked him up high doesn't mean you didn't take him eight other times in another draft and, and you've, you've got eight you're, shares you're, of DJ Moore. Now let's go ahead and diversify. That's very fair. Diversification. But in the Ultimate Dynasty Podcasters League, that's, I mean, not that it's for very much money, which would be my it's only true. knock against that league, but like we should we should probably up the ante to, you know, like another $200. But whatever. See Just what throwing you that off. out there. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. But, but, you know, you're right. That's a great point. He did take Royce Freeman. So that 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 was that was alarming to me a little bit, and yeah. I, and I know that he's he's currently on the rampage of saying, you know, 
don't draft rookie receivers, which I'm yeah, 100%. Yeah, he got that from us I'm 100%. two years ago. <laughs> I don't know if he got it from yeah, us, but he should for, have. Thanks for tuning in and been on that, that train for a while. And, and this is why I'm completely okay with taking Royce Freeman over DJ Moore. But I'm, again, like you said, to lead this thing off, I can't argue with you for taking DJ Moore over him. I think the what you saw on tape and, and the ridiculousness that was him and then couple that with the metrics of you getting the best of both worlds out of this guy and the draft capital and, and the roof is the ceiling here oh, he's basically deal. the number one option on that team and Let's i didn't not mean joke to, like to throw any shade towards dj Moore at all if that's what it sounded like when yep. i was talking about him i was just trying no. to well before we get off dj Moore, i gotta say this because if anybody just heard that and wants to go find the link to the ultimate dynasty podcast league i just want everybody that just heard that to know we took over that team last year. This is true. And it was a horrible team. Right. Don't think that that's that how a, we We roll. took over this orphan team. We, we were not a part of that we startup. We are trying to turn this team around as we speak. That team is not probably, representative of how we roll, and I would have not checked okay on that team. As Jay Wayne mentioned, it's obviously it's a bit more for pride. It's a low buy-in number. Yeah, it's and like $30 dollars probably didn't something? pay. I think it's 50 but we didn't pay enough oh, okay. attention that's, to that league to, to start off with when well, we, took we took it over Well, we took over a bad year. team to begin yeah. with, plus we didn't really care. But, but yeah, anyway, we want to no play excuses. in the league with the, I want to play, play like a champion. <laughs> yeah, I want to play in that league with those guys, and we want to beat them up. But, uh, you know, here's here's for what Jay said. To let's let's start over, raise the rates, you know. We don't have to start over. Let's just raise the rates. I'm sorry I'm not sorry. I'm a coxman. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first Asian. <laughs> All right. Wedding All crashers. Right. All right, that'll wrap up DJ Moore. My first Asian. <laughs> let's just hold on a second. Let's take a quick commercial break, gather ourselves, and we'll come back with pick one nine. All right, welcome back. Before we go any further, I got to give a huge shout out to our new sponsor, The Alley. Huge. An awesome bowling alley located in the heart of downtown Charleston. 150 seat restaurant complete with 12 televisions, 260 inch projectors, full bar, American Southern inspired cuisine, eight bowling lanes. Eight of them. Awesome arcade games. Right? I mean, it does top notch. Vintage, vintage, great games. Anything you're looking for. Oh, yeah. Best games ever. The best part of it all, you can host your fantasy football draft party there. <laughs> the set pricing includes food, bar package, your own private space, access to televisions, draft boards, etc. Anything you could want. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go on to the alley, thealleycharleston.com. Really excited to be partnering with them. I think we're going to record a live show at some point in the future. So look out for that. If you're in Charleston, you already know about these guys. If you're in Charleston, definitely take advantage of this. It's a great spot. It'll be an awesome place to have a a fantasy draft at. Yeah, and if you're just visiting Charleston, definitely go hit them up. It's a really fun time right there. Play some of those arcade games. Yeah, anything you can want. Get you an hourly rate at a bowling alley. I like that feature. It's a a three-down back of of a night. It is. You go in there, you get some bowling in. Good food. Legit bowling alley. It's only eight lanes, but it's small and tight, but it's a legit alley. That's why it's called the alley. Good food, lots of TVs, and the and the and the games. They got skee ball. They got they <laughs> Pac Man. went high pitch. They ski-ball. got skee ball. <laughs> they got they got Pac Man. They got you know all the multiple classic arcade like, games. Yeah. Karate Kid. I mean, them boys are all over the place. Yeah, they got a little ping pong table outside. They got a basketball hoop outside. They do have a basketball. Got all hoop. sorts of fun stuff. I believe it's higher than ten feet though. Over at I'm the uh, shorter. <laughs> that happens when you get older. You do get shorter. All right, well, we just want to give them a good shout-out. Definitely hit them up. It's a lot of fun. We'll be there checking it out, doing a live show. I'm excited about that. Let's yep. go ahead and get the uh, the rest of this draft started. Book I it think now. We, I think we got pick 1-9 on the board. You're white, then you be. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> that's very accurate. <laughs> that sound button is right next to the draft sound, which is right there. That's that's like your that's like your first round draft pick fumbling the ball we right just, when he gets his first. Carry. We just had oh, ha- had our ADP of our producer yeah. his his stock just plummeted a few yeah. spots. Yo, what if what if like if you're white. watching the draft and the Goodell was coming up there like up oh, up oh, the draft's coming in. You are white then you be left. Uh, we're experiencing some technical technical difficulties. Wouldn't work in that setting. <laughs> True. Just don't kneel. Okay, <laughs> let's. Uh, that's a, that's a different discussion. Let's uh, let's get into pick one nine. Who's whose pick is this? I've, I've, I think it's me. I think it's here. me. That's Casey Myers. I'm on here at, at C M. Or no, I'm at where am I at? <laughs> I am C Myers. I'm at I am C Myers. That's where you can find me. <laughs> that's where he's at on the Twitter. On the Twitter. All right. Well, 
Big Co just mentioned that he got bounced from the playoffs early. It didn't take long for the man who bounced him from the playoffs to be picking. This would be his pick. Dalvin and the Chipmunks. Great name. Enter the arena. Obviously lost Dalvin Cook last year, so that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, I would get in further into this team here, but where we're at here in this pick, I think it's we're pretty much in a in a chalk kind of phase here still. You're taking the Chevy Tahoe, and you got to go with the with the Tahoe. Royce Freeman. Hopefully, it's the leather package. Uh, <laughs> the limited. Yeah, you no no reason to get anything <laughs> These else. These days, if you don't have heated seats, get out of here. Or, no, and no, no cool. it's cooled seats. The That's cooled where the seats is man. really where it ups the game, especially have, down here in the South. Come on, oh, man. I ain't got no cool. You, seats. Have you ever sat in a car with cooled seats? Oh, you get out and it's not Course. ninety degrees outside and your ass is they freezing. Even, it's the best feeling in the they world. Can't even, they can't even get a Lexus these days. They don't have the cooling seats. But I mean, I can't afford one of those. But I do have a new, brand new 1999 Subaru Outback that has double heated seats well we all know big co loves his safety loves subaru stay super. high in the uh so safe all wheel drive whatever the safety pick is <laughs> what's what's that uh all wheel drive yeah well, the the FIA. Wife, associates. wife and i pulled off the road the other day to sit by the water and take in the fresh air the br- nice breeze and then she you know we're in some loose sand and she goes this thing's four-wheel drive i was like yes all wheel drive we rock we ready we ready all wheel drive big co's family consists of a 99 subaru and a 2013 Volvo. 2013 Volvo. XC90. So it's the, whatever the, the safe. safety pick safety of the year baby. that you see over there on safety the commercials first. there. Safety He's first kind of goes well, with be, this I pick mean, at one nine. Let me right. just preface the 99 Subaru Outback. I had a nice Toyota. <sighs> Try to get us back on track. Had a, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> had a nice Toyota Tacoma. That it, everybody, that's a cult following type truck. Had to sell that, buy a duplex. Things couldn't, happened. Got it. Got it. Had, to, had, to start, a good deal. had to start my retirement. You know, had to start my retirement plan. Had to sell my Toyota, buy a duplex. Picked up the 99 Subaru for two grand. We're ready to roll over here. Just, uh, what comes with that Subaru is a nonstop single of Melissa Etheridge <laughs> playing. <laughs> <laughs> what you should have done was get the Chevy Tahoe. What You should have got the Chevy Tahoe. No way I'm driving a Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> I'm not stopping at the gas station that no, often. I'm trying to get us back to goddamn Royce Freeman. Oh. All right. So, well, Hot without further heavy. ado, Royce Freeman <laughs> is my pick for Dalvin and the Chipmunks driving in a Chevy Tahoe. That's going to be the new team name. <laughs> Maybe he could change his team name. If he changes his team name. Dalvin and the te- Chevy Tahoes? That doesn't make sense. All right. Royce Freeman and the Chipmunks? With Sometimes you swing and a miss. What are you yeah. going to do? You can't win them all. Strike out. Anyway, obviously, like I said, this is kind of a chalky pick. We've been chalk throughout. You can kind of dice these guys up however you want, much like these next couple of guys we're going to end the round with. I chose Royce Freeman here. I didn't really take into account his roster. Um I, I like we stated before. I think Ross, Ru- Lilla. I think Royce Freeman is a very safe pick here. I don't think there's anything sexy about him, which is how we got on the Tahoe bit here. Yep. Um, I think he can catch the ball. He can run between the tackles. He's got enough speed. He's shifty. Sometimes he has some power to his game. It was one of the knocks that I had about this, that you would like to see a back of his stature, maybe have some more power at times. But then he did play through a shoulder injury, so sure. I can make some excuses for him there. And then when you got 79 receptions in your career as a college over the college right. course, that's very strong and very appealing. Yep. So just to talk a little Broncos football here, uh, last, last season they were eighth in attempts with 457, 12th in total yards with 1,852 Tied for 18th in average, 4.1. You're welcome, C.J. Anderson. Um, but then 24th in rushing touchdowns with eight. We know this offense was moderately inefficient uh, for the most part, especially in the red zone last year. But that's um, still impressive. They were very committed to the run, eighth in rushing attempts. Well, well the attempts, because the wheels fell off the quarterback situation. We touched on this last week talking about Christian McCaffrey, but since this is Royce Freeman and he just got drafted by the Broncos, I think it bears for repeating – the first couple of weeks of the season, you got Trevor Simeon being, yeah. you know, on top of the world. They got a couple of wins, and then a couple of weeks later, he's benched. I mean, like literally, wheels fell off of this offense. They bring in Brock to start a game or two. Yeah. Trevor Sim- Tre- Trevor Simeon's out, and then well, Paxton, 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 Paxton Lynch, Lynch comes in. in. That ain't working. A mess. It's a Mike big mess. McCoy gets fired after a six game losing streak. Yeah, I, the head coach Vance Joseph wants to run the ball. I like Vance in uh in in Bronco Town over here. Um, C.J. Anderson was ninth overall with 1,007 uh, yards with a 4.1 average. Um, the TDs, oh, it's over four. The TDs were a killer for C.J. Anderson last year, um, and the rushing offense in the red zone was stagnant. Um, well said. 
so that's kind of where we're at. There's a there's a decent nucleus of an O line here mm-hmm. for this team. Um, you have Garrett Bowles, who was a, dra- a draft pick last year, who was was a little banged up throughout the season, but but played pretty well. Obviously, you have Ron Leary at, at left guard. Bowles is at left tackle, so that's that's pretty solid. Um, and then they traded for Jared Valdir. Right, they got Valdir. He's on the right side of this line. But Hasn't played great last couple of years, but he's been hurt. So for sure, you, you're looking he's for a, a big. He's a veteran. Big bounce back from him, but he's been pretty solid. He was acquired in a trade for a sixth rounder. Then you go to the center, who as a rookie, I believe he was he was named he was an All Pro. I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but as a rookie, he crushed it. A uh, little not quite as good of a of a secondary year, but that happens. So from from left tackle to left guard to center, this is a very strong unit. Now they picked up, as you mentioned, uh, Valdir. So they're looking for a nice, you know, rounded out on the right side. Right, plug plug the old hole in the dike on the on the right side, and then they're looking for the fifth round pick, um, Connor McGovern of last year to step up um, and and be the 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 other part right of this guard. They got him penciled in there, right at right guard. So they're looking for. Uh, a player basically are looking for this right side of the line to catch up to the left side of this line, which is a, a pretty strong uh, asset of the Denver Broncos. I'll take a strong side of the line instead of an average across. Right. Give me give me a couple I, guys I can run behind. I don't hate that. And, and you know, Ron Leary and Bowles and, and the center. Solid. Solid. Yeah. So okay. we'll, and but hopefully it, Val, Valdir can bounce back. And they didn't play – that well, last year they were graded out as the twenty third ranked offensive line per yeah. PFF. Um, they gave up the like second. The most, wheels were off of this thing. They gave up the second most sacks with thirty two and the fourth most pressures with two hundred seven. So they they tried to make some improvements, maybe get a little healthier. You can almost say that about the, any. The offensive Broncos line just in offense as a whole was just a mess and atrocious. Their whole offense and was it was a mess. just up and down and all over the place. You thought the defense was going to be really good, and it. it showed up when it felt like it right and that that has since been kind of picked apart a little bit but they they revamped here and i like what the denver broncos did here and through the draft they got a pass rusher and then they went offense offense with royce freeman and Cortland sutton who we'll talk about in a second i love those three picks man you bring in chubb on the d-line which is awesome to pair with von miller and then the two offensive weapons that you just said that's good 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 start in the right direction for the broncos so i guess the biggest question here is the incumbent uh pair of mostly Booker. They have D'Angelo Henderson, who was a later round pick, but I believe Booker was a fourth or fifth round pick a few years ago. Who, fourth. I, I, I don't, I don't dislike Booker by any means. I liked him at all. Booker. Um, does, so does anybody have think that Royce Freeman isn't going to come right in and, and, and get to be the lead dog in this clubhouse? I mean, I don't think they're going to hand it to him on a silver platter. I mean, if, if they would have taken him higher in the draft, maybe they could have, you know, made their stance with their draft capital. Um, but you know, I, he's high enough to get plenty of opportunity and i just feel like Devonte booker's looked plenty good in some spots he hasn't looked good in other spots but again you take you gotta injury take too. some injuries and and just there was again like you jay may jay wayne mentioned the quarterback sacks and pressures and stuff like that from the o-line like it all kind of works together when it's working to get together right sure, exactly. it works together and when it's working together wrong it works together you don't so, know what's a fugazi and what's real here. exactly like a quarterback uh, if a quarterback's holding the ball too long he can create his own pressures i don't care how good the offensive line sure. blocks and if you got a couple of guys that are playing good but two, you know it takes five to have an offensive line you could have two big gaping holes and he could get big getting crushed from one side so which obviously would have been the right side so i I feel like Royce Freeman jumps right into a team here who you you bring in the quarterback from the Vikings. Case Keenum. You bring in Case Keenum. He's on a team-friendly deal, but what can you do for me, Case Keenum, because we didn't want to put too much stock in an unknown quarterback with a rookie and, and go that route and trade up to be able to buy one I think one they tried, year. but it, they didn't have to. Right, right. Well, if it works out, if Case, Ke- Case Keenum played great last year, if he can play – 90% of that this year, the Broncos just won the quarterback free agency market. And a part of Case's game, Obviously I think not that's Kirk Cousins. underrated, they is, tried. is his mobility and, and able to create a little bit and, and sc- kind of have a scramble drill involved. So even if the offensive line isn't quote-unquote great, which I think they're better than as advertised on paper, he, well, I think he has a little bit to that kind of in his game to to really help this offense move around well even if even if the viking system would have been running on all cylinders last year it was still case keenum's first real shot at it so it's not like he With had really a no pressure that, to be like who's coming in i gotta watch my back every well, plays under a microscope well he didn't have that but he did but i mean i'm saying that's like his first time with not having that yeah exactly and it's and first, he still it, doesn't have that in denver well but i'm not but, really though 
Chad Adam, Kelly, I guess. Is, Adam Thielen didn't throw the ball to himself, and he had a terrific season. Yeah. Stephon Diggs had some monster games, and those backs got fed, and the tight end, Kyle Rudolph, like when you got that that many guys scoring fantasy points, the quarterback's doing something right. I mean, the defense helps out a lot, but sure. the Broncos' defense isn't too far removed from being one of the better units no in doubt. the league. No doubt about it. So I feel like I feel like Royce Freeman comes into a really good situation. Yes, there is a couple of backs here that, that are capable, and I definitely like... That I like the game that um, the veteran running back has, but uh, Booker, Devontae Booker. I like the I like all his catches in college. He did come out a little bit on the older side. Doesn't bother me a ton, but if it doesn't work out for the first couple of years, then all of a sudden you're old and you haven't played any NFL football really. Sure. So I think that he does have a little competition, much more quality competition than Rojo walks into to play against. But I don't see any reason why Royce Freeman can't come out and if he. Obviously, he played. He's versatile and feels safe. He play, He's versatile. He feels safe. He played ridiculously good football at Oregon for years. Like it wasn't just a one year breakout. Right. He put it on tape, and he put it on tape for three solid years in a row. Even in even in the year where he was down in sixteen, it wasn't the worst ever. It but, wasn't, and and, and it he was, was there's a lot of excuses you can make right. for him on that 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 year. Was, he dealt with injuries, which I think you're about to say the team yeah. fell apart and it totally revamped everything they had going on going into the next year, and that was why he didn't come out in '16. He waited another year. A smart move on it, but one of the reasons why I said I don't I would have taken Royce Freeman for my team last pick over DJ Moore is because if if he could be he could be in for monster workload if he takes that spot because he is a three down back. He's proven it. He can do everything you want him to do, right? He he's not flashy. He doesn't have the breakaway speed, and there's a reason why it, that he's not everybody's favorite running back in this class. That's, that's why he's back here. It's been creeping up as of late. It definitely but has been creeping he, up, and, and we gave him a lot of love pre-draft. We get pre-draft, we were giving him love for sure. But that's you know he he is the Swiss Army knife, and if he can get in there and and take that three down roll, that there's a three down roll there to be had. It's not like Devo, either Devonte Devonte Booker could earn a three down roll because he could do that, or Freeman could earn a three down roll. My, my only problem with it is last year you just there was times where C.J. Anderson should have just stayed in the game and been the guy, and they just cut, it seemed like they were just forcing Booker in the game and forcing Jamal Charles in the game, and both of them were mostly fine when they got the ball, but it just seemed like. I thought C.J. Anderson could handle more work than you were giving him, and, and C.J. Anderson got a fair amount of work last year, and he was decent doing so. I'm not. Oh, and the game. This isn't were... about. This isn't about C.J. A, a crusade for C.J. Anderson. It's just about the way that they were using their running backs. Makes me a little hesitant to say that I think that he'll jump right in there, and they they want to give somebody a three down roll. Well, just to to play devil's advocate with that point is that. They probably, I mean, the wheels had fallen off. They weren't going to make the playoffs. I mean, it was. We're talking. They knew they were going to have to pay CJ Anderson four plus million dollars this year, which oh, well, they probably is, didn't want. I understand right? the cut. So on they the probably end. no, but so I mean, that's probably why they wanted to see what they had in these other running backs to a point last year when they could have been given CJ Anderson more. Well, work. this was. I mean, this was all season long. It fluctuated all over the place. What you were doing with CJ Anderson is my problem. Like when there's there's a game log here where CJ Anderson when he has fifteen or. 20 carries like there was they were more on the win side than the loss side correct that was mostly the first three or four games of the season when they were winning he was getting 20 carries and it was working out and then the wheels just fell off six game losing streak fire offensive coordinator yeah now you now you're picking up another running back here i mean to bring it back to royce freeman i i I really like the kid i i think i had him ranked a lot lower than or, or lower than some of the other guys i was listening to to us break down royce freeman and and i was listening to myself talk about all the bullet points of why he's good and then i ended that breakdown with i could see you taking him over a lot of these guys and then they ended up doing that in the nfl draft and and now he's he's rising up the rankings and and you mentioned he doesn't have the breakaway speed but he does have some deceptive speed for a big guy like we tried to allude to that pre pre combine and then he came out and ran a four five four which is pretty solid for a 230 pound dude oh well, well that's what that's that's, that's what did it that they, they were like oh well, he can run a four or five and look at him right. so of course i gotta move him up my board here exactly he's maybe gonna, i underestimated him he's not gonna burn past love corners that. you know or a fast safety but he can still get big chunk plays and and what he make what he lacks in long speed he makes up for with quick shifty feet rock solid vision and then the pass protection has probably got to be one of the biggest things the broncos saw on this cat yeah but but there's a reason. And the pass catching ability, he ha- he possesses the talent to right. not have to take him off the field. Right, right. But but for me, there's there's still a reason why he's the eighth running back for me, and he's not ahead of any of these other guys. 
and and why I'm fine taking a swing on DJ Moore ahead of him is because he does have Devontae Booker there. The the Broncos, you know, did work multiple backs into their sets last year, and and I'm I think Case Keenum deserves a lot more respect than he's ever been given, but but it's still it's still hard coming off the year that they had to just just flip that around and so while he's definitely the last of the backs of, of any good back to take so if you're looking for a back and you're there at eight you probably gotta you gotta take him because you're not or gonna seven get that's plenty solid of drafts of that me and big code did it was seven eight straight running backs yeah yeah that's that's what i right. that's what i mean yeah, yeah. eight for me he's the eighth best running back and if you want to take him at number eight that's fine but i can't really nudge him up above anybody else just because of Basically everything we said about these other guys. I mean, and looking at the end of the day, he could be sitting here, right next, right below Saquon Barkley, talking about like he's had the longest, best career of of all these guys. Oh, he's definitely certainly not out of the realm of possibilities at all. He's definitely got the most consistent. But I'm with you. I'm with you 100. percent I wasn't saying that to. He's definitely got the most consistently good game log outside of Nick Chubb's injury misses. Like yeah. if Nick Chubb doesn't get hurt, nobody's got a game log like his. Yeah. And for fear of that's got to make you feel good of starting a whole new conversation here. Like you said, he could end up being one of the best backs in this class. That's kind of what makes this whole first round kind of difficult, because once you get to the point where, like, I know the first four guys that I really want and I'm taking those in that order and and I'm not probably I'm probably not trading out of those spots because I want those guys. But when you get to five and and you really want carry on, you, you trade back. Because you don't need to take carry on a five, right? Sure. We, just, we we and, we and got y- to that part. Yep. Y- y- you trade back because because you don't mind whoever the eighth running back is because that sure. eighth running back could end up being one of the better running right. backs. So you, you if you if you have a pick at five, six, or seven, you you trade back. And it's just like Big Co said multiple times. There's going to be people outside in this draft that outside of those top four, or even if you want to narrow it down to three, somebody loves each and every one of the next eight or nine guys and exactly. if you're indifferent right. and they'll give you and a you second don't really care which one you can make a ton of money moving back exactly right, right. which we and did. still get your guy if you if you're indifferent but and, you're and like maybe I, not maybe you don't get your guy but you get somebody else that you had right next to your guy because well you, you can't think, if you're at one eight you can't not get a good running back if you like these guys it's true you know so yeah. and one if, eight's a great spot to be at one eight's a good good spot one seven is a good super spot flex. Superflex, this, this all trickles down. Yeah, Superflex you know, makes a little it even, further. First right. round gifts even deeper and more fun. Right. Yeah, I agree. All right, will that will that wrap up uh, old old Royce Tahoe Freeman? Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's get on to pick one ten here. With the tenth pick in the first round of the FF Dynasty's rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft, Big Co, you are now on the clock. All right. It gets on, interesting here. Drafting for the Washington Bullets. Interesting team name. Awesome team name. picture that he's got up there. All the star players. Take out my pea shooter and aim it at Calvin Ridley. <laughs> pew, pew. I'm, I'm taking Calvin Ridley. I know Sounds that... Sounds like it, something Jerry Jones would say. No one <laughs> expected me to take a wide receiver. Well, I've um, been here since they had pea shooters. But we... <laughs> But we have gotten past the eight top running backs, and DJ Moore's off the board. This is true. Uh, I like Calvin Ridley's quarterback. Had the pick of the litter. As as he's pretty much got the most solid quarterback situation of any of the wide receivers. Given even DJ Moore going to Cam Newton, you know Calvin Ridley slides in there to play with Matt Ryan, a much more prolific passer than Cam Newton. He's the best bout, best route runner, and he's going to come in there and have the second corner on him. Obviously, Sanu's a starting second wide receiver for now, but Ridley's the future. Sanu is very solid, but Ridley's the future. He's slottable, though. He can, he'll can he be right in the slot, oh, if yeah. not the two off the rip. He's been working in the slot and out wide during OTAs. He, and, and Sanu, same way. So they can flip-flop right. all over the place. And Sanu's guaranteed money will be all paid out to him by the end of this year. Yeah. So I look, could. I look for Ridley to really show up time after time, splashing off the screen, making the plays, the, the, making the ridiculously good-looking plays that he made as a freshman in college. Maybe not consistently to where he's in your starting lineup every week as a as a rookie because of Sanu, um, and of the other options they got two running backs that catch passes and a tight end that maybe you know hoping Could to emerge. hoping to break out Could on emerge. his own spending spending uh, his off season with right. Matt Ryan Hooper, Hooper said Hooper it's time for Ryan. me to get real I'm spending the off season with Ryan every every time he wants to go out and throw Hooper's there right and I like that about Hooper and and that, that excites me about Hooper but talking about calvin ridley here and the, there are lots of mouths to feed on this atlanta offense 
but he definitely is in a position. He's a first round pick, super solid football player, tough a couple of years there with the quarterbacks at Alabama. But, you know, you got Julio Jones to limit the defense's focus on anybody, plus a solid running game. And they just locked up Matt Ryan. Uh, I mean, Calvin Ridley's in a great spot. Obviously, Julio could stay there for a while, or he could be gone fairly soon. So is what made you draft him over all the other available receivers just the fact of the quarterback and the, the maybe the closest to plugged playedness? If Well, really what made me draft him here over the Cortland Suttons of the world and the Christian Kirk, who I like a lot. I like both of those guys, actually. I mean, there's nothing – I like both of those guys. They're just rookie receivers, so, you know, sure. thumbs, thumbs down all around. Uh, but – Really and truthfully, I remember watching Calvin Ridley as a freshman. I'm a Gamecock. I watch SEC football. I remember those. I well, remember we are in the South. Is that where right. you guys play? You guys play in the SEC? Oh, okay. yeah. SEC East Champs. I didn't know. SEC East Champs a couple times the last couple years, if you didn't know. The, uh, Is the SEC East real? Yeah. <laughs> it's just hard to see him over the SEC West. <laughs> West kind of shows up. Um, those plays he was making as a freshman, I remember thinking, no, he's going to be on my dynasty team. And then as time went on, I was like, ah, he's probably going to get drafted too high for me to put him on my team. But then all this happened. It plays out the way it is. And Ridley's getting hated on and hated on and hated on. Tons of hate. There's no way I'm taking a wide receiver up in the top of the rookie draft because I'm going to take the best running backs. But if he's going to be sitting around at 110, 111, 112, 2 1, why not? I, yep. love, I mean, he's, I, I think he's going to be a really, really good NFL receiver. And. You can't. You, know. you have to basically just wipe out what happened for two years because Nick Saban's trying to win a championship. He doesn't care what happens to his wide receivers. He's got a quarterback in there that, that squats 850 pounds, and he's running it every play. Yeah. And when he doesn't, he gets, you know, Calvin Ridley has 60 catches, and the next closest guy is Bo Scarborough. With 16. 14, you know, I think. I think, I think it was, I think it was well, Yeah, maybe 17. We're all well, off. <laughs> right, we're all off. But that's the point the, is, Bo the, Scarborough the was the second is, leading wide res, or receiver on the team. The point is, when Alabama put the ball in the air, it went to Ridley. Right. right. And other than that, I mean, just take away for two years just playing in a run first, run every run first down, run second down, run third down system. And Ridley, go back to his freshman year when he had a quarterback that could throw the ball, and he was unstoppable, and he was a freshman. Sure. Yo, know, Calvin Ridley has the whole bag of tricks. Not to be confused with bag of dicks. <laughs> Not really sure where that phrase came from. One day I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Anyway, <laughs> he's probably the safest wide receiver pick that you could take in this class. Like, if you're wanting to take a wide receiver and you're not trying to mess it up, like, Calvin Ridley's probably the way to go. I second that. He's, like you said, he's That's kind of what I was getting at when I asked you that question. He's the best route runner of all these guys. He's a super high character guy. He just wants to win. He doesn't even want to talk him talk about himself like he's he's the opposite of a diva he'll block all game long without one ball being thrown his way if had he has to. to he already had right to. he doesn't give a fuck he's right. down and if this dude was 20 and not 23 people would be people would love him yep but they want to hate on him because he had like a bad combine because he's something? old and he couldn't couldn't right? couldn't get off of press man which i didn't really see i didn't see that either too but, much of an issue i mean he is 189 pounds so that's but not, he's wiry not, not strong huh well, that old wire the broad strong jump, guy. But the broad jump. Well, they want to crush the combine, but he ran a four four three and a six point eight second three cone drill, which are solid metrics. And and what I love it's, is when here, you let me point this out real quick. There's just like you were saying. There's players that will get the benefit of the doubt every time, and there's players who will just get hated on. Well, he had a decent spot in the combine there. A couple of things he did well, but those other things that he didn't do well, they're just going to hammer him on those couple right, of things because right. he's one of the guys who people aren't giving the benefit of the doubt to. Right. Well, they can't see past what happened for a couple of years there in Alabama. And he's only 189 pounds, can't be press man. And, 189 and, pounds? How, how heavy is his uh, Antonio Brown? Yeah. 189 pounds. Right. Look it up. Look it up. What I, what I really like Playing is Playing the best competition week in and out. It's everybody's Super Bowl. I'm going to take his good combine metrics and com- combine that with what you see on the field. Well, with what you see... Objective. <laughs> watching him play <laughs> you take this fast you take this quick 40 and this solid three cone drill and you see these measurables show up on the field with his game speed and his quickness off the line of scrimmage his change of direction the precision route running the start and stop ability like a lot of these guys with great metrics you don't always see that translate to the field like take dj chark for example his metrics were off the chark right <laughs> 
But uh, then when he's every single ball that he catches, it's that like was a he's K at the end. Seems like he's fielding a punt every time he catches a ball. Pulls he looks like the guy out. from the Little Giants who catches the ball on his face mask. <laughs> he pulls his <laughs> pulls his jersey out like he's trying to make a bucket. For However, the ball. he could catch. His I couldn't ball even watch it. I couldn't never even not watch touched it. his chest back, ever. Back to Ridley. So so like I'm gonna take the good metrics that I saw, combine that with what I saw on the field, the safeness, the route running, the solid offense. The, the high character you can't you can't really miss with this guy let me, man let me let me jump in here on that because I, I mean you can but you can miss with any of these right, guys but sure. and he feels cozy soft I liked <laughs> I liked and seconded your your safest wide receiver in the class as a dynasty pick as a not screw it up he's a, I, I second that motion for sure the only thing about that is when you think when you hear safest you hear maybe best floor but the upside of this guy is through the roof, no matter what people in the national syndicate here will tell you, because you take everything you just said, Jay Wayne, and so I don't care if he's only 189 pounds. The NFL doesn't that we're we're we just transitioned away from the 240 pound wide receiver. Like it just happened. You don't have to be a power forward anymore to score fantasy points as from the wide receiver position. Look at look at Robert Woods is playing the two position for the Rams last year. Before he gets his shoulder hurt, he's in the middle of absolutely being a WR1 in fantasy for six, six weeks in a row, yeah. just being wide open in a good scheme. There's and he's plenty of these guys. fast and able to take advantage Doug Baldwin. Of Doug Baldwin. Calvin Ridley. Stephon Diggs. Calv- Adam Thielen. Exactly. Exactly. Calvin Ridley's, he, he, I think he has the best floor, but his ceiling is up there with anybody else. And maybe he doesn't, he can't just juke you out of your shorts like DJ Moore, and maybe he doesn't make the fade catch like Cortland Sutton. It's everybody's got their their niche and everybody's got their ups and their downs. But Calvin Ridley is well rounded enough to have as much of a ceiling as you could as you could really need out of a late first round rookie draft pick and as much of a floor as you could ever expect out of a first round rookie draft pick. Sure. I think that was that was well put. I'm I'm definitely right there with you on a lot of those things. I, I had a couple of guys ahead of uh, – I probably had Sutton ahead of uh, Calvin Ridley here for the reasons of the stature and frame and that I do believe that – Sutton's got that Des Bryant know, mold. Right, that I think that he, you know a guy can come in there with that kind of size and frame, and we'll get into Sutton in a minute. But just those – I believe he's really raw and, and could be kind of more towards like the Julio Jones, kind of your big-time number one kind of guy a lot easier than a Calvin Ridley could, and that puts him – over the top for me, but definitely don't have a yeah, problem. Yeah, and I don't with. mean it like that. Like, the no, Anto- no, obviously, Antonio Browns is not normal, you know, but that type of role, that type of wide receiver is happening more and more than it ever has before. For sure. So it's becoming a normal idea. Obviously, Antonio Browns, the farthest from a normal specimen more right. than NFL football field, but the idea of a 189 pound wide receiver being your team's focal point is a lot more, right. it it's a lot more acceptable. It doesn't have to be this ridiculous 220 pound 240 exactly. pound 64 guy Not that every time that, that teams have been stabbing on for right. years and years and years exactly you know calvin johnson kind of at just chasing that big frame super athletic guy you can get it done exactly. and the nfl is moving towards more of the six foot 190 200 kind of guy i believe oh, and no at doubt. all position at the running back position and obviously not at 189 you want but your yes. running back to be bigger than that but just you know you know what i'm saying yeah i do I actually uh maybe two or three weeks ago my boy sigmund bloom put out a, a podcast that was really hit on a lot of that about it was i think it was just like a draft review or a draft uh, you know kind of summary or something like that and they really hammered into some wide receiver uh theory about size and just what you just said about you know stabbing at that Calvin Johnson frame because it just never it there's only what you know Calvin Johnson right. and all the other miss you're missing hits. out on all these other exactly. superb athletes who can get it done exactly so anyway that's gonna wrap up this this uh, one ten pick here we're gonna go to a break we'll be back with the last two picks of the first round of the FF Dynasties mock it up before you fuck it up fuck it up fuck it up fuck it up. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. If you want to join the discussion, hit us up on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We're going to continue with our rookie mock it up before you fuck it up. Right now, we got pick 111. I'm being told the commissioner is. He's queued up and ready to go. And actually, it's your turn. This is my pick. It's your pick. I'm picking picking for you because I traded this pick 111 to you. 
I got last year. Two first rounders. Count them one, two. But I got my boy Mike Williams. You so did. I'm still pumped about that. We'll talk about Mike. So what am I going to do here? One eleven. Looking I don't at know. your team. Let's see who did I already take for you. you took carry on. You took carry on. We so can... pump that up. I think right here I just got to go best player available. Or whoever you think the best player available, because it's basically just receivers left at this point. So right. you go in Christian Kirk, you go in Anthony Miller, Gallup. Going Sutton. Sutton. All up in your grill. Got to go Sutton, 6'3", 218, which if you look at Roto World, it says he's 6'1". They're messing stuff up all the time. It's fake news. Especially when they give us their opinion. Just give me the facts. And they can't even get that right all the time. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, Roto World is that's my go to. Hey, I, I'm on it every I damn like day. I like it for news and yeah. information, but Jay Wade's saying let's, l- let's lay off the opinion. I'm not going to yeah. hate on Roto World one bit. You want to on him? I was out. Proofread your post. There's spelling errors all the time in that shit. Come but on. I went out on this fishing trip with my dad and the, and the tour guide. He was talking about how much he loved fantasy football. And, you know, obviously I'm into that conversation with him. I didn't have the heart to tell him. After we got off the boat, my dad goes, So is that guy any good at fantasy? Because my dad knows I'm a beast. He goes, is that guy, is that guy any, is it, was he any good at fantasy Your football? Your dad always knows you're a beast. Right, right. So, That's where that false sense of confidence comes from. Yeah, but it's not false. So anyway, <laughs> he goes, so is that guy, uh, y'all are talking fantasy football, is that guy any good at fantasy football? I was like, no. He goes, how'd you know? I was like, because he didn't know what Roto World was. He doesn't even know what Roto World I mean, literally, he was like, well, what's Roto World? And I was like, oh. Uh, so how let's about get that? back to fishing. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about that bait over there? Yeah, <laughs> there's no Why don't reason. You tell me a little about about this reel. Well, once we got once got we got to that part, mouth he was like, "Where do you get your player news from?" And I was like, "Roto World." And he was like, "What's Roto World?" And I was like, "Okay, we're gonna talk some fishing because I'm not gonna talk to you about Spot fantasy football. Bass. I have nothing else to say to you about fantasy football. You don't know what Roto World is. <laughs> Can't do it. So Can't win with them. Cortland Sutton in 111. I couldn't tell you what the Roto World of Fishing is, so I'm, I'm not, I couldn't <laughs> true. really carry it's on the conversation. Masters, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the reason that you are crowning Sutton as Well, I think for pretty, BPA. Much, pretty much the reason you alluded to in our last segment about Calvin Ridley, I he, he's a guy who can... This guy. He could, he could be a number one wide receiver. Sure. The, the the size and the frame and the red zone ability and, and the possession this type You and ability. I are both falling victim to chasing the 6'3", 220 guy right now, which sure. is fine, but I like I like what it. Sutton has in his package. Absolutely. Not yeah. in Cortland his actual Sutton, package. If Cor- but right. If Cortland Sutton comes out last no, year in a dynasty rookie draft, he's one 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 two one three. Yeah. It was pretty hot and heavy. Um, and this I, is accurate. I, I the, think, the, dynasty, the dynasty community was broken hearted when he decided to go back to school. This is true. I think I started watching tape on him last year before he d- did not declare, and then he declared, and I was like, wait, what did I, I just wasted all this time for nothing? <laughs> this year he did declare. Yep. And, and, I, and I went back and watched all the stuff on him this year, and, and, and you can go back and listen to all our breakdowns to hear what we, we thought about him, and, and he's, he's definitely that red zone threat. As I mentioned, he's, he's – the hands you could you could question him at times. The, the, that offense wasn't very intricate. He didn't run a lot of routes. Basically, went down the field, just go up jumped up over it. people and called it. Right. He did. He did the Des Bryant. But then right. he comes to the combine and puts up a ridiculous three cone drill. Runs a four five four. Gives you some solid metrics for your pleasure. Um, comes into a, a pretty solid spot here. I feel like um, I, I think that this guy could end up being one of the best wide receiver in this class. It's it's kind of splitting hairs for me for for who I like the most. I think I got to go with DJ Moore ceiling that'll make him my number one wide receiver. But then I, I Ridley and Sutton are right there, both two and three for me. I think I'd probably put Sutton a hair above Ridley just because of that number oneness that I for whatever reason feel like he could become. Um, the the Broncos are obviously bringing back Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders for this year, and I like both those guys, but they're both over 30 years old. Manny's 31. They're both on contract through 2019, but they'd have to pay him 10 and $14 million respectively in 19, so I, I don't see him keeping both of those guys after this upcoming season. I think it's going to be an awesome year for Cortland in terms of learning from these two pros on how to be, be a pro and how to run routes and develop as a player. I think he'll get his chances in the red zone this year, and I think targets. I think he's going to have the easiest job out there as the number three wide receiver on this team. Yeah, and I love this pick for the Broncos. 
Yeah, I do too. He's, he's a great pick. Um, and he because he's a versatile guy. He can play well from the slot. He can do work over the middle of the field. Um, I, I read the Roto World blurb that said he was good after the catch, and I was like, nobody was giving this credit, this guy no. credit for being good after the catch except for us. No, and that's the that's the first thing that stood out to me, and that's the reason why I do like him so much because he does have that frame. He does have the six three kind of two twenty pedigree that you're looking for, and you know you can question a little bit of the jump ball stuff from him from time to time but that, that's a the quarterback I, play was pretty the erratic. quarterback play was pretty erratic and i feel like when you have that frame that's a teachable asset sure the, the box out jump up kind of deal and you get a better system and a better quarterback that can all be improved but what you what what is i believe a harder thing to attain especially for a guy of his stature is he has i think a little bit of julio jones in him on that crossing route and his run after the catch ability i think he's kind of hard to wrangle after you get him in my opinion some people don't agree with me but that's what i saw on tape and that's what made me put him up in the upper echelon of with dj Moore as being a tear break between the one and two and then a tear break between the mm. rest of the guys is i think that he has the frame and the size and the agility. speed and the agility that you want from this guy so he can catch you the fade he can jump over but he also can run you that crossing route or run you that that big dig and and get you some run after the catch ability i i mean as far as the fade route or the contested catches or the jump up and get it i mean there might have been a player two that you could have said hey he could have done this better but oh, there well he claps for, ball. well the, for the every, hands for, the, the actual every, catching ability for every one or it. two for every one or two catches that he could have made look a little easier there were six or seven catches where it's like nobody else in college is making that play right i mean he he he's a grown man receiver out there already like yeah. there's there's what, what you know you caution yourself on is this you know and it's not all laquan treadwell's fault but is this going to be a laquan treadwell like fall off the radar kind of player or is this going to be oh my god he's a top 20 startup pick next year kind yeah. of player and obviously with the competition there with like jay wayne was talking about it's probably not going to be that next year <laughs> But I agree with that. I'll take a year with two great teachers, with Emmanuel right. Sanders and Demarius Thomas. Not not too many. Pl- you can't get better than that. Well, when, and with their salary situation, there's no way both stay. After no this way. Year. And they might not even make it through this off season. It's possible that one of them's not there through this off season. It's I think not, they've already paid them for this year. So. It's, it's possible that they get tr- one of them could get traded or and or something else. But even if you go to the, go to the week one as it sits with him being the third wide receiver there. Sometimes you just take a guy and it's like, all right, well, maybe he doesn't pay off this year, but I got a, a longer term asset. play. Exactly. Court because Clint's of where he there. went and because of the non because of the short sightedness of a lot of dynasty owners, for whatever reason, because we're playing dynasty and it doesn't make any sense. Right. You're able to get this guy, I think, a little later when where, where you agree. should. And this is a little bit more of a slightly long play. And it could be a guy who I had him as my number one receiver because when the ball is on him and he can actually run after the catch, it was one of my favorite things to watch and he he was awesome he just didn't get that opportunity a ton of times and he got became disappointed with some throws and some erraticness and sometimes where the team was going and where the ball was placed and all that stuff and yes you shouldn't get that upset but it's it's human na- it's tough not to yeah and what we talked about with calvin ridley and touched on i was and i'm we got into the conversation about the big wide receivers versus a smaller wide receiver and i mentioned sigmund bloom's podcast like he is the one quote unquote big wide receiver that didn't fall in this draft. Basically the NFL pushed all the other big wide receivers back. They got tired of chasing it. Mm-hmm. They got tired of saying, Hey, we're going to take a stab on potential because potential gets you fired. And Cortland Sutton did not get pushed down that list. He's one of the guys that stayed up at the top. And like it, Jay Wayne mentioned, the agility numbers at the combine were ridiculous for a guy his size. Yeah. And you put all those cone. together. And I didn't always see that three cone drill on tape, but sometimes. No, and you sometimes do. you see it backwards and forwards. Sometimes you don't see You see it on tape, and you go, and, and then you see Ridley going on tape juking defenses out of their shoes being wide open and Jalen Hurts throwing it 20 yards out of bounds and then he goes to the combine and maybe he ain't he doesn't have the best numbers that everybody wants him to have yeah. and then you got some people that don't look that big and strong you know that fast or that agile for their size on tape and then they go to the combine and you're like well where did that come from kind of like Jay like we were talking about with the Gasecki the tight end like how do, he doesn't look that Cal- agile on tape Calvin but, Ridley's broad jump looked terrible on tape yeah when, you he, was, can't, when he was coming off the line of scrimmage Right, just look terrible, horrible, abroad. horrible. You can't, you can't take that. You can't take those numbers. You can't take that three cone away from him, though. Him, it's true, you it's know, very you true. can't Rain. take it away from him. Either. Well, and for for Cortland or Ridley, either you know. So, 
Some guys don't test well. Some guys test extremely well. You have to rely on what you saw, what you saw in your eyes and, and your trust of, of what you know and how you know. And, or and you could rely on our eyes and what we yeah. saw. You well, I, 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 like. I like I like this. I like Casey saying that he had Sutton as his number one receiver. I like Sutton's a potential that I, right. he, that potential could get you fired. But I like that potential a ton. And you know, if it works out for the Broncos quarterback, why if Case Keenum is a quarterback, and we mentioned and that, and we let Chad Kelly's name come up and slide right away, like there's a there's a, some rumblings about how Ch- how good Chad it's Kelly's a cult about, following. There, there's some rumblings about how, how much, good he's yeah. about Kelly's to be. Not the brightest crayon in the toolbox. They, well, the thing about it is his off the field IQ and his on the field IQ are two different IQs. Yeah. This and is just South football similar to Jameis sometimes. Winston. Exactly. Yeah. And so when Chad Kelly's in between the stripes, my man's good. And they said he just cleaned it up after a year in the league. They said he just got his body right and he's about to be good. He Could be maybe the reason why they didn't go reaching around too, they too might, much. They might know what they got. So between one of those two quarterbacks, if one of those two guys can come in and stabilize this quarterback position, and not that a rookie couldn't do it next year, but then you start all over again. What I mean is if the quarterback situation can just stabilize – then sort Sutton's upside could be realized earlier than having to go through. If 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 Case Keenum goes back yeah. to being the Case Keenum that he was on the Rams, which that was Jeff Fix, Fisher boat anchoring him there. But if he if he goes back to being a Case Keenum and not last year's yeah. Case Keenum, then this whole rigmarole of the quarterback situation starts over for the Broncos. Well, and, and I think the Broncos have been doing a good job of of br- kind of bringing in the next kind of guard and, and bringing him back here. Like they just drafted Sutton. They brought in Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Hamilton, who I, I really like, who could end up being the slot receiver after the other receivers part uh, with Demarius sure. Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. They have Carlos Henderson from a year ago. Yeah. Uh, they have Jake Butt over there. They had, they just brought in Royce Freeman. They have Devonte Booker. They've got a decent offensive line in place. Like they've, they've done a good job of having some guys in the wings here so that maybe when it's time to turn over, it's not that bad. And they've been learning from guys that are Could, in front yeah, of them. This was a beautiful move by the Broncos. Couldn't because agree if more this guy with that. reaches and blossoms into, into his, any of his potential, it allows them to move on from these high paid dudes. And, it, and it, that with the, with the uh, Sutton point, but all those players that Casey just rattled off it, I could, obviously, they could materialize into nothing, and they could be terrible. But, but like you said, they they set themselves up. They obviously have some good wide receivers with the veterans that they have. And so, if Case Keenum comes in there and he's a good wide quarterback this year, they're a playoff team. Man, Case if, Keenum needs some respect. Man. I'm just saying. Listen, it's a tough division, listen, so but maybe no, not. Well, but, true, but you but they're they're competitive. Maybe if Mahomes Case, if Case Keenum is good, they're they could be a playoff team for sure. But they also set themselves up with now and future quality position players. And so if they have to chase a guy in free agency next year, they, uh, you know, quote unquote, got some guys to bring him in. Hey, look at, we got, we got, we got talent. We got players, you know, you're not just coming. We're not trying to lure you over here well, to like the bills are, they got with, you sure. know, the, they're the opposite of the bills. They're set up and they're staggered and they got age guys. They got veterans. They got quality youngsters. And, they, and they, to that point, they got like the future. it gives them the ability to have that option to go chase the free agents. Because like Jay Wayne said, it, you can get you out of these higher paid contracts and you have these guys kind of waiting back here. Yeah. And this is how you see a lot of blueprints for Super Bowls kind of. Yeah percolate because there's a bunch of guys and then you can go acquire some free agents that can help bring your locker room together and turn your team around and all of a sudden you're not paying some of these guys too too much money and it unlocks the ability to right bring upgrade the other positions around you solid pick by the broncos solid pick for your dynasty team at 111 uh Listen, listen to these numbers by Case Keenum right here, right? Are you, <laughs> he was 17th in attempts last year, which isn't, you know, it's what it is. Middle what it is. the back. 12th in completions, which that's good for second in completion percentage. Uh, right? Uh, that's what people up. care uh, about. Uh, uh. <laughs> Tied for 12th in touchdowns and 12th in total yards. Like, those are way better. Those are, like, solidly better than average stats. Sure. The Broncos just got significantly better, and everybody around them with the bringing in of, of – Keenum. Case Keenum. Well, that's yeah. what, this man some respect. I mean, that's what I said. The Vikings position players did too good for Keenum not to have done well. Keenum was in some play. Case Keenum pulled start, spot starts for our my fantasy team last year. Case Keenum sure. was cool under pressure, man. That dude does not care when that pocket collapses. That's, he that's what I was off. saying earlier. I think that's an underrated part of his game. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. cool under pressure, and he's got weapons around him right now, and they have 
people behind those guys to kind of build this franchise up. He's been hating on for so long. He's got nothing to lose. He goes out there and lets it rip. But good for him last year. Good for him finally getting paid. I think uh, let's go ahead and move the F on. <laughs> let's let's round this thing up. Who do we got? Who's on? Oh. Who's on the clock? I think it's you. Oh, it's me. Pick one twelve. Pick one twelve. Well, Al Dente. If I got to do it, I'll do it. Guess who he's got on his team? Todd Gurley. Todd, Todd Gurley. Gurley. He's picking last. Championship Gurley. squad from old Derek Bell. Uh, 112. Al Dente. Gonna first and last name him, huh? Oh, yeah. D. Bell's a good guy. wouldn't mind. Daryl Leak. Daryl Leak. He did win the <laughs> championship balls. with Odell on IR, so I got to tip my hat. Very yeah. impressive. Alex and, Smith and Blake Bordelais. Yeah, those were ugly guys to start the season. CMC. So he's he's obviously the best team in the league currently, or at least he won the championship well, anyway. Yeah, he got hot in the playoffs. You get hot. In, well, I mean, Gurley's kept you hot all year, and Kenyon Drake and Alex Collins were players that you didn't think were going to materialize, and they did. And then you got CMC kind of anchoring you down there as a solid RB2 for you all season long, and then just a nice bunch of role players. Um, Marquise Lee. In the wide receiver position. But when you have all those backs that were crushing at the end of the year, you're starting most of those guys. Um, point, and exactly. then he has Josh Gordon and Odell Beckham coming back this year so good for him um i'm gonna add another receiver to this core who could hopefully improve it a little he does have martavis bryant he's got randall cobb like i said josh gordon marquis lee he's got Rashard matthews perennially disrespected kelvin benjamin up and down and then odell on on ir so we're gonna add one more guy to the mix here who he doesn't obviously need to produce right away who i'm not really sure what the first year is going to look like for this guy but i'm going to take christian kirk here which, again, as the receivers go, people have these guys just like the running backs mixed up in every which Absolutely. direction. Some people have Kirk as the first guy off the board. Right, Some right. people have him as the second, really? third. Really? Sure. They're all mixed up. The They're wide receivers are pick your poison just like the running backs. I think that the uh, obviously you have Larry Fitz playing the position that you think that Christian Kirk is going to fit into the mold into the NFL. So be, and the quarterback position is a li- Really, the whole team in Arizona is kind of up in the air right now. We're not 100% sure what they're going to look like. Yeah, uh, right. In well, the trying coming... to figure out what offense Mike right. McCoy is going to be running, and they're like, we don't know. He's ran all these different – he's ran the West Coast. He's ran the zone read. He it's... took Tebow to the playoffs. Sure. He's done all these different – work with Phil Rivers. Who knows what he's going to do? It's... He's a guy that tailors his offense, though, to his players, which is right. something you like to hear. you got to yeah. love that. And and he, they, they went and, and selected Christian Kirk, and obviously Larry Fitz – just came back this year, so he's not going to be around forever. Kirk will still be on the field. Not exactly sure how it's going to mix up and how it's going to play out, but I'm sure they they'll, scooped up Bryce Butler. There'll be some, yeah. So it's going to be Bryce Butler, Larry Fitz, and Christian Kirk. Don't know how that, like I said, don't know how that's all going to mix together and homogenize. But a, you get a good, maybe one of the best guys ever to learn from to play the slot position in yeah. Larry Fitz of how to approach yeah. the game, how to do exactly what you need to do, how to win, how to not throw rocks at cars, how to not throw rocks. Even though that was a fairly dumb move by Christian Kirk, they said they kind of knew about it. It's water under the bridge. The Phoenix Open is historically a raucous uh, <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Are they allowed to yell while you putt? A lot, lot of yelling going on there. <laughs> a lot of yelling. Anything waste management's involved in, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Maybe, um, maybe they were just picking up, picking up. Maybe they were, yeah. The, maybe they were just trying to pick up. They were trying to shoot rocks. He's not a quarterback. He trunk. aimed for the he aimed for the trash can, hit the car. Whoops. So I think I did that. Whoops. I was ten years old, but whatever. Sure. <laughs> I think whoops. Christian Kirk to me feels very safe. Um, I know we've been talking about some safety here. I, I feel very safe with drafting Christian Kirk. Uh, I think he's a, a really good run after the catch ability. Mm, like is, a another th- is, is another thing that I really, really love about this guy. Um, that kind of why I'm taking him over Anthony Miller and Gallup here. And, and James Washington. And James Washington. Unfortunate landing spot, and I am being short-sighted on the James Washington thing here. But oh, I love James Washington. I, I love James Washington. I like what Christian Kirk brings to the field. I think he's a really good, well-rounded receiver. It's just kind of where it's going to be year one mm-hmm. um, and how he's going to fit into this Arizona Cardinals. And if I like Josh Rosen probably the most out of any of these quarterbacks. I think he's pretty safe, and I think he really plays well into what Christian Kirk's game is. The yeah. kind of short to intermediate uh, will crush that area of the field. I, again, I don't want to hammer this. I just don't know how it's going to pan out in yeah. year one. Well, I like Christian Kirk a ton, and my boy Sigmund Bloom tells me I don't know how he's tied in. I don't know how he knows so much, but I was. <laughs> I'm so I'm so impressed by the. You get on that couch, people just start talking, bro. <laughs> 
He he gets people to it's open like up. I've, I've, over the last couple of years, some of the stuff that Sigmund Bloom's told me in the off season has just come to be so true. Later on, I'm now I'm just I'm hanging on every word he says. If he would have just told you to buy that Amazon stock a few years earlier, can't get enough of it. <laughs> I, well, I know I should have moved to Amazon earlier, but I was in Facebook and I was reveling in it. So anyway, Sigmund Bloom tells us that Rosen. And Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald, the three of these guys have a relationship dating back for a few years. And I had no idea. Obviously, how the hell would I know that? Thank you, Sigmund Bloom. What are you, on (laughs) Ancestry.com? How do you even know that, Sigmund Bloom? But I believe you because everything else you said is true. 23 23 and me. me. (laughs) Right, right. Nobody sign up for that because it's just a DNA tracking way that the government's going to... Don't even do it. <laughs> Get you all together and but keep tabs on what, you. This, this I've is never a met le- my dad. I kind of want to do it. This is a legit, legit relationship that these three have. And the fact that these two point. rookies. <laughs> keep going. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. The fact <laughs> Jay Wayne just <laughs> dropped it. I never met there, my dad. That's that was pretty <laughs> deep. Some hard, deep stuff. There. I tried to pretend like I didn't hear it. Yeah. I'm that's sorry. I'm deep, sorry. Man. That shit is deep. That's my fault. That shit is deep. can be dropping that in the middle of a fantasy football breakdown. Can we turn the AC down some? It's hot in here. Can we get some cool air blowing in here? Uh, so anyway, Rose and Kirk, and, that'll be an after show topic. <laughs> Rose and Kirk and Fitzgerald have a relationship dating back for years, and I believe Sigmund Bloom. And the fact that these two rookies together end up on a team is just... And is, Larry Fitz is right in the middle of it. That's what I'm he's, saying. He's, like, I, it's kind of incredible slash freaky that these two rookies got on the same team with the same... And I'm not saying Fitzgerald was in there saying, hey, draft these guys. Obviously, they took Rose in as quarterback and took Kirk as a wide receiver. I don't know how in the world it worked out, but these three guys know each other. And I believe that the dots will align to say, Rosen throw it to Kirk a bunch. That's all I'm saying. I think Rosen throws it to Kirk a ton. Maybe not a... Not like... You know, start in your fantasy football lineup every week, week year one, because Fitzgerald's kind of in that uh, perfect spot that Kirk would be in his perfect spot. But like you said, I don't think it gets, I don't think you could get a better teacher. And for me, for my money, if Rosen's any good, I think Fitzgerald plays more than one year because he's the, the GOAT. And freaking Kirk will have to move around and find his target somewhere else. But I think that Kirk has shown enough to, line up in the backfield and uh, there's more than one slot position on the field. If you line up the right way, you know right. what I mean? What happened to there's twins? ways to get him the what, ball. What happened to four wide, bro? Yeah. You know, you don't have to have two tight ends every time. You don't have to, you know, it's like just because you got three wide receivers. Sure. You can, there's slot. There could be two slots every single play if you want them to be. So Kirk could be all over the place, but Gerald could be all over the place. And Kirk's adamant that he's not just a slot receiver. He, adamant. He believes that he can play anywhere on the field, and I, you know, I don't. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But I, you know, he's going to get some run playing outside, so we'll, we'll be able to at we, least see that. There's no way he's not going to be on the field a good portion of this season. Right. I don't and, think. And, and, they and don't have you, anybody else. And if you know they anything Butler about and Fitzgerald, if you, yeah, right, correct. They don't DJ have much. It's not back. very so deep. DJ's a, like three receivers. Mm. Correct. That's 100 catches. So, but like, if you know anything about Kirk. You know he can return punts and kicks and, and huge that, bonus. Love that part. Outside him and Pettis, probably one of the and and Naheem Hines was also pretty solid. Yeah, but definitely not on Pettis's level. Kirk's right there with him. I think Kirk. I think Kirk's going to be. I think he's. I think he's going to be a beast. I do I, too. I think he's going to be an absolute beast. I do too. This is where we're in this purgatory right now, where there's just a bunch of guys, and it's kind of take them wherever you want. We're in. You know, I I think I like Kirk next best over Anthony Miller and Gallup. Uh, maybe Gallup has a better immediate situation right off the rip, but I, you know, who, who maybe, the hell knows? Maybe, but I like Kirk's skills more certain, than I like right, Gallup. Wait, right, I, and at a certain point, that has to trump the situation. Like, yeah, I, and, I, and, and I, I, really, I want if Anthony Miller it was if I don't know if Trubisky's going to be any good. So, and there's a, there's some stuff going on over there already, and some mouths to feed. Right, they, they, they got a Rob, and they got they got, t- they got tons more legitimate targets Burton than the and Cowboys Cohen do. And, I, I and I, obviously A-Rob. we're talking Anthony Miller and Gallup because they're not going to be we're running out of picks here we're at twelve but as far as Kirk over those two guys and we'll get into those in the next you know the next six picks in the second round obviously Gallup and Anthony Miller will be in those six picks like I'm not sold on Gallup's position I don't think just because Des Bryant's gone and there's no catcher no no actual catchers of the football really over there that. It's a run first team with a run first with a quote unquote run second quarterback. I'm I'm not sold on the targets going Gallup's way enough to make him. I would definitely I think take Gallup Kirk. will see plenty of targets. I, I put I would put my I would put my draft pick over Kirk uh, in Kirk, Kirk oh, in sure. Kirk's I mean, hands yeah, over Gallup. Absolutely, I, 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 I just took that. Kirk 
for sure. And because I like his skill set better than these other guys, like far enough of a separation, yeah. I think. Agreed. When, when it comes to, I, I also like James Washington's skill set probably better than all these guys, but his situation is enough to not have him up above these guys for me. Yeah, I yeah, like, that makes I sense. Like James Washington, James Washington was like the top, my top wide receiver for the longest time, and I had to nudge him down to like fourth pre-draft, and then after draft. Had to nudge him down even a little bit more because there's a lot more to mouths to feed over there in, in Pittsburgh and in Roethlisberger, blah blah blah. You could be done soon, so right. I think that'll, uh, yeah, I think that'll wrap up today's. Yeah, that's show. enough jibber jabber for today. Make sure you hit subscribe. Any of your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, YouTube. Please go on there and hit subscribe or thumbs cut, up it. We literally YouTube. we literally give you the email address at the end. It says we accept hate mail. So if you don't don't hit us a one star review before you hate mail us. Right. We send, only have four, but send over. We the, would like to get rid of those four. Right. Send over the email. Tell us what the problem is. Just don't be a little bitch. Is really what it comes <laughs> yeah. down to. Why, why would you take the time to go give us? There's a There's plenty of other s- shows to go one star <laughs> review. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that'll do it for today's show. Till next time, catch us on the next episode, episode, episode. Hold up.